Adsent Latouf, the ABC journalist that was sacked. A lot of people are upset about this. Uh, they're also calling me a hypocrite for not supporting her. But why on earth would I be supporting mainstream journalists who are often uh, people who are pushing this type of cancel culture and celebrating when this happens to other journalists or ordinary Australians as well when they're silenced, right? These people are part of that world. And when it happens to them, of course, as someone who mocks the mainstream journalists and the actual industry as a whole, of course, I'm going to find not really delight in it, but I'm going to find the hypocrisy. And I've been doing that. I've been showing you posts of Latouf where she's talking about Tucker Carlson and she seems to be a bit, you know, OK with what happened to him and even laughing uh, about that in a way, joking about it. I also showed posts where she's talking about the time during COVID when you know, how should we, you know, get rid of people in terms of silencing them or not talking to people who have different views because we don't want to hear about their crazy anti-vax views or their crazy views against mandates. You know, this is someone who has uh, espoused these type of views as a mainstream commentator in Australia now for a number of years. Now, all of a sudden, the shoe's on the other foot and she has been sacked by the ABC for breaching what the ABC claim are their social media policies around what journalists and you know commentators that work there and other personalities that work there what they can say on social media now if you ask me there are so many journalists at the abc that should be sacked right there's so many journalists and reporters that should get the sack so it is a bit intriguing in, in one sense that latouf has been sacked uh this swiftly now that there could be a lot of factors to this more more so the fact that she's not hasn't been a permanent member of the ABC. Uh, she's very newly hired there, just very recently, I believe, uh, as a morning show host. I know she's appeared on the ABC previously, but she's a very new hire. There could be some things to do with the contract. It might be easier to sack her because of the you know casual contractual nature of the contract. Who knows? But uh, she's not like your typical ABC journalist that's been there for years and years at the broadcaster. Now, like I said, again, so many ABC journalists that should be sacked because how often do we see these journalists, at the ABC sharing activism, whether it's about the voice to parliament, whether it's about climate change, whether it's their TDS when it comes to things like Donald Trump. These guys are on social media all the time sharing nonsense. So, yes, I will welcome the sacking of more ABC journalists and potentially even the defunding of the ABC completely because this is taxpayer funded media. And for a long time in this country, they've been unable particularly in the last couple of years we've seen, they've been unable to present impartial, unbiased uh, coverage of lots of different issues. Now, right now, Israel, Palestine, uh, Gaza, this conflict that's happening, this war that's happening, some people even take offense to calling this a war, but you know this is how it's discussed. Right now, of course, it's very contentious. Uh, I, I myself, as someone, as an independent uh, commentator and journalist that cover this, I see uh, the controversy just having any type of a view or opinion or not showing something or showing something too much causes, right? That's me as just an independent person on my Instagram, right? How many people have uh, read comments on my social media, for instance, where people are like, oh, well, I'm, I'm unfollowing you now, Rukshan, because you won't say this or you won't support this position. It's the humanity of everything. You know, you got to share this particular view. And sometimes it, it's, it's hard as journalists, as reporters, to be in this mind frame and to be this activist when you're trying to present information, particularly around the war, particularly when there's so much propaganda involved. And in particular, the hardest part, I believe, for journalists in countries like Australia around the West, especially those that come from different backgrounds. I believe Latouf, her background, her heritage is Lebanese. Now, you're saying that shouldn't matter, but... In a way, those things do matter in terms of perception. So it's very difficult because of these connections to come and appear as presenting impartial, unbiased information to the wider audience. Now, as an independent person or as someone that works in a private organization, particularly as an independent, the only rules really are whatever I want to say and whatever I want to do, who's going to sack me, right? Who's going to do anything to me? I can, you know, a lot of the time, the views that you're getting directly from me are things that I, uh, you know, are coming from me, right? That's just the way it is. With the ABC, once you sign up to these organizations, especially a public broadcaster, you are going to be a part of that system, whether you like it or not. And that is in the clause. So when people tell me this is about a free speech issue, 
all these things. These journalists that work at the ABC, they sign up for these things knowing this. They actively participate in all forms of cancel culture, right? As I mentioned with the uh, the piece about Tucker that she shared, right? They, they, they're, they're a part of this world. They're happy for conservatives sometimes, a lot of these progressives, to get cancelled. They're, they're happy for people who are liberals in this country, for instance, to get cancelled because that's the culture that they're a part of. So when it happens to them, when it happens to them, again, it's got nothing... <laughs> really to do with free speech it's got nothing to do with censorship uh in in the first instance now that can be tested uh depending on why she got sacked or which which post it was uh what she said all these things can be tested but in the first instance of the policy that they sign up to when they sign these contracts you know abc can almost do whatever they want and there's expectation from the public that abc uh, appears appears at least to be impartial. And I think the problem here with Latouf is compared to the other activists, uh, journalists at the ABC who very cleverly disguise their activism, right? Especially during COVID, they're very clever in disguising their activism. Now, Latouf, she has really, uh, I, I believe, she, 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 what she's expressing and what she's saying, I'm not saying she's wrong in those things to do that, but she strongly believes in those and she cannot stop herself from having those views. And I respect that and I understand that and all this kind of stuff, but she's working at the ABC. When you go to present at the ABC on one of their morning shows, you are not presenting, uh, you know, to the, uh, the Middle East, for instance, you know, you're not in uh, Qatar working for Al Jazeera, you're in Australia working at the Australian broadcaster. So there's some basic things, for instance, in Australia, for in, we don't, uh, you know, recognize Hamas as a legitimate organization. They're a terrorist organization as far as Australia is concerned. And now many of you will look at this and be like, oh, and make all types of arguments about why the other side are terrorists. It, it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant as far as Australia is concerned, as far as the government here is concerned, and as far as the media here is concerned, the mainstream commercial media and the uh, state-funded, you know, public broadcaster, Hamas is a terrorist organization. Israel is a part of the liberal democracy style world, allies with one of our closest allies, the US, uh, shares all types of links common to Australia. Whether you like this or not, uh, this this informs a lot of the, the narratives, a lot of the way that reporting is done. Uh, and of course, the fact that we live in a multicultural country where we do have a Jewish community, right? We do have a Muslim community. We do have a community of people who are very pro-Palestine. We have a community of people who are uh, very anti-Hamas. This is only normal in a multicultural country. And the national broadcast of the ABC, uh, it's a very sensitive issue and they have an obligation to appear to be impartial. Now, myself and other people in commercial uh, jobs, perhaps we don't have this uh, requirement so we can speak more freely. Even Latouf she, on other, other publications where it's not like an, a public broadcaster, she can speak more freely. She did an investigation with Crikey, for instance, trying to figure out if they were saying gas Jews and all this kind of stuff. She can do all that there. Uh, even at the ABC, she should be able to do that. But once you mix uh, that in with very public statements and posts about your views, it's very hard for people to then listen to you on a public broadcaster and forget about your own personal social media views. And right now in the current climate, this is uh, this is how it goes down. And she's a part of this cancer culture world is, is my belief. And it's unfortunate uh, that it's like this, but these people have created this environment. Now she's worked at Sky News before, I believe, um, or she's, she's, she's contributed there numerous times. Uh, and she works at other lots of different outlets. So. Whether this, this stops opportunities for her and all this kind of stuff, I don't know. But as, as far as, you know, this progressive or this type of ABC style outlet where it's government, uh, government linked, it could be problematic, her views, definitely. Um, and that, that's what we're seeing now. I remember a lot of these comments about hypocrisy, a lot of these comments about, you know, Rukshan, the humanity as a journalist, you know, you have to look at what's happening and report it because of the humanity of everything and it's tragic everything that we're seeing right now is very tragic uh but f beyond all of that this is no different to the arguments that journalists were facing during the time of covid people were saying millions of people are dying if they don't take the vaccine this many million people will die how can you report 
as someone that doesn't take all of this into account. And that actually stifled a lot of the reporting that we saw where people were getting so emotionally vested in trying to promote a certain viewpoint or promote a certain narrative uh, or promote this view that somehow journalists had this obligation to you know, save humanity along with the government and everything else that was happening. As far as, you know, personally, at a personal level, of course, of course, I am very much aware of the tragedy that's unfolding in that part of the world. But sometimes when you're presenting information, you cannot take uh, that to influence you the way that you present information. That's just that's just a reality of doing journalism. That's just the reality of it. Uh, it is not even like, uh, you know, one of the complaints I get is like COVID, for instance, you know, you had a very personal view during COVID. Every single person, whether you're a journalist or not, was locked in their houses uh, in Victoria. Everyone was faced with mandates and vaccine and things and this. Currently, right now, we are watching, many of us on the West, as observers, we're consuming information that we're getting from you know, Al Jazeera or from Gaza, from CNN, whoever's there on the ground, from the social media posts that we're getting from the ground. So a lot of it is information in that sense. Some of it is propaganda and we're making our minds up. If you are, of course, Palestinian, if you are from the Middle East region, sure, you're going to have a more personal direct connection to it, especially if you're a journalist from this region. The amount of people who comment on my posts, who tell me about impartiality and, you know, you're taking a certain view or your friends, you know, Jewish and he, he's uh, Israeli and that's why you're taking these amount of people that tell me that stuff. And when I read their surnames and I read, you know, their other commentary and see where they're from, they're from the countries surrounding Israel. And so many countries surrounding Israel have at some point or another been involved in some conflict with Israel or in that region. So I'm looking at you talking about impartiality, perhaps you are not yourself being fair in terms of consuming multiple types of information because you already have your own biases built in, right? A lot of people are looking for confirmation bias when they're watching news and when, when they're watching reporting. So for me, despite losing, you know, thousands of followers, a lot of these things actually matter. I'm continuing to try to present information uh, without involving too much or any of my personal views about what's happening right now, because I do have views. I definitely have a lot of views on what's happening right now. Like I said, from the very get go, it's going to be based around my Australian values, and I have not swayed from that, I believe personally, and I continue to do that. So perhaps, uh, you know, as an independent reporter, I'm facing these challenges and I'm able to do that. Some of these reporters at the ABC could potentially uh, be looking at reporting in this vein as well and not so much partaking in either activism or forms of propaganda. Again, guys, tell me what you think. Tell me if you are going to unfollow me and let me know why you have unfollowed me. Look, it, it's it's fine. It's a free country. You can follow, unfollow. You can do whatever you like with anything that you're reading and seeing. If you want to be in an echo chamber and just hear from people you agree with, be welcome to it. Uh, if you want to now all of a sudden support these mainstream people, these journalists who have been spouting crap for the last couple of years, because all of a sudden now they're saying something you agree with, be my guest. Uh, it's a free country. You can do what you like. But if you want to support my work and continue to uh, support independent media and look, sometimes we might not always agree, but at least we're giving different views and different alternative um, information about what's happening around our country and around the world. You can follow me at the real Rukshan on X, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Rumble, Odyssey, and all these other platforms at the real Rukshan, or go to my website www.realrukshan.com, and see you guys next time.